Well, welcome to the third Sunday of Advent. This Sunday is often known as Gaudetta Sunday. Gaudetta is from the Latin for rejoicing. We rejoice this Sunday for many reasons. We rejoice perhaps because we are over halfway through our Advent trek to Christmas. We rejoice because we hear the words of Mary in the Magnificat. This Sunday, we also rejoice because of the healing that is offered through Jesus. Our reading from both Isaiah and Matthew point us to the healing work of the Messiah. The blind will see, the lame will walk, the deaf will hear. Every Eucharist service is about healing. We come to this table to be fed, to be healed, and to be reconciled to God and to each other in the Sacrament of Communion. This Sunday, we are going to take some special time for folks to come forward and receive prayers of healing and anointing with oil. God's healing is certainly something to rejoice about. Our Gospel reading from Matthew also gives us reason to rejoice. It is again a reading that involves John the Baptist. Last week's reading about John the Baptist, he was in full prophet mode. He was in the desert baptizing and saying that there is one coming after him that will be so much greater than he. Immediately following last week's reading, we, don't get, we didn't get it in the gospel last week, but right after that passage, Jesus shows up and John actually baptizes him. And John sees the Spirit of God come down upon Jesus and hears a voice saying, This is my son. Last week's John was confident in his message and his role, and he would go on to experience the presence of Jesus and hear this voice at Jesus' baptism. This week we have a different John where eight chapters later, some period of time has passed between this week's and last, Jesus' ministry is in full swing, and John the Baptist is in prison. It is certainly not the result that John was expecting. John had told of a Messiah that would come and would separate the wheat from the chaff. The Messiah that John was expecting was one that would put things right, and probably for John, putting things right didn't involve him being thrown into prison and eventually killed. It is from his prison cell that John sends one of his followers to Jesus to ask the question, are you the one who is to come or are we to wait for another? John, the man who baptized Jesus, has doubts. I think we can probably all understand why John would have doubts. It's easy to believe when things seem to be going well, but sitting in a prison cell certainly creates a lot of time to think and allows room for doubts to come. This is probably not the scene that we want or expect on this third Sunday of Advent a Sunday of rejoicing. And Jesus' answer in the gospel is probably not the one that we really want to hear. His response to John's disciple is to simply say, go and tell John what you have seen and heard. Well, what the followers of John would have seen and heard at this point was a man that was hanging out with all the wrong people a wandering wonder worker performing healings, a preacher that was not calling for a violent uprising against an oppressive government, but instead talked of selling everything, giving to the poor, dying to oneself, and a justice that involved feeding people. John's question from prison is one that continues to come up even today Every person of faith has that moment where they doubt, where they step back and go, is this really what I believe? Can this fantastic story be true? 
Is there really a God up there? And if so, why are things so hard down here? Jesus' answer in the Gospel of Matthew is to look and to listen. This answer was hard then and it's still hard today. If we take time to look and listen, what are we seeing and hearing? We live in a country where the gap between the rich and the poor is ever growing. We are one of the richest nations of the world, but many go without food or clothing or housing or health care. A year ago, I preached on the third Sunday of Advent under the tragic shadow of the shootings at Newtown. And one year later, there have been at least 25 more such school shootings and violence as recently as this week, but still nothing has seemed to change. We are still waiting for the turning of the tables that Mary sang about in the Magnificat. But while we are waiting, we have work to do. We talk about the church as being the body of Christ in our world today. If Jesus' response to John's doubt was to say, look and listen, our response as the church is to continue to do and say the good news. The church has a choice. We can be a place that is focused on comfortable ideas, on self-preservation, a place that keeps the doors closed and does not make room for the Holy Spirit. We can be a place of anxiety over doctrine, money, and power. Or we can be the body of Christ. We can be like Jesus. We can hang out with all the wrong people. We can offer love and forgiveness. We can offer a place of healing and comfort. We can go out into the world feeding people. We can make room for doubts and questions, and we can use these to help grow our faith. Perhaps that is the greatest reason to rejoice this third Sunday of Advent that even our doubts can grow our faith, right? John sends a follower to ask this question. Jesus does not tell the follower to go back and tell John that he's bad for asking the question. He doesn't chastise him. He doesn't say that John is somehow less because he's asked the question. Instead, Jesus praises John, praises what John did and gives John an answer it's not an easy answer, but it's an answer. We can rejoice this Sunday because we are welcomed by Jesus. We are welcomed by him to come around this altar to pray for healing and to be fed in the Eucharist. We don't have to have an unquestioning faith. We just have to have faith. We can come here with our doubts, our questions, our pain, disappointment, unmet expectations, and even sadness, all of it. Our Advent story is told by people, a desert preacher, a teenage girl soon to become a mother, people that did not and could not know the whole story, but the story could not have been told without them. That story that started so long ago with John and Mary is one that continues today, and we are part of that story. We may ask questions, but we are also part of the answer. We tell the story. We are the hands and feet of Christ in the world that continue healing and reconciliation. If when we hear the answer, look and listen, and aren't happy with the world that we're pointing to, we can change that world. On this third Sunday of Advent, rejoice in God our Savior, for he has done and is doing great things. Rejoice. Tell them what you hear and see. Amen. Amen.